I'm Philip Milano, and I'm not afraid to answer the questions that most people just wonder about, no matter how touchy or taboo they might be. Feed your curiosity. Read my column, Dare to Ask, every Tuesday in the Florida Times Union. Why we do black folks talk in the movie theater? Now that's a true one. <laughs> why are Latinos <laughs> such great lovers? Why are Asians such bad drivers? Ooh, why do black folks love hot sauce and chicken? <laughs> why can't white folks dance on beat? Why do Jew Jews own Hollywood? No, that's not true, because gays own Hollywood. Anyway, <laughs> Ooh, today man, get on the we're talking about racial stereotypes. Mm -hmm. And also sitting with us is the author of the provocative book, Why Do White People Smell Like Wet Dogs When They Come Out of the Rain? <laughs> and other questions with a smack in the head from your mama. Please welcome author <laughs> Philip J. Milano. Because I'm frustrated with the business I'm in, which is the, the media, mm -hmm. running away from it. You know, I mean, we cover the issues. We cover welfare, abortion, uh, separation of church and state. But when we really want to talk about stuff that's really embarrassing, it's, oh, you know, we can't offend. <laughs> okay, don't you, what, I mean, look, I got you a, a number? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's, you on BET. Did you know, this ain't ABC, hey, NBC? Yeah. You on BET. No, but I have a question. In fact, I would have to say, while I applaud the show that we're doing, we've really been spending a lot of time talking about talking about race. You know, we're not really getting going for the jugular, talking about kinds of questions that come up on my side, such as, why don't black men go south on their women? Uh, oh, uh, hey, 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 <laughs> Man, that's someone might not do it well, but they know that. I think that's bad in the They want to keep them over there. That's, a that's, a <laughs> that's another show. What are those? Trying to be calm? I'm trying to be calm. Because you know. That is I just can't see that. Like, okay, why when I see a, a Middle Eastern person get on the airplane, I'm nervous. <laughs> Yeah, we're getting there. I'll tell the truth. Why would I'm, I'm, I'm driving next to an agent? I'm scared. <laughs> why, um, these are certain other ones. They say, why do all black people smell like hot combs? <laughs> why when I go in the nail shop, I think they're talking about me. <laughs>
have more of the dreaded hydrogen sulfide in their emissions, and so theirs can tend to uh, be a sort of more aromatic. <laughs> Do male ballet dancers pad their crotches? <laughs> Well, we know that male ballet dancers put their best foot forward on stage, so to speak. Uh, these dance belts are designed for the male to do a sort of tucking procedure to bring himself in place so that he doesn't injure himself. And because they wear such tight outfits and because they have such a low fat uh, ratio in their bodies, that um, you're going to have that sort of uh, bulge there no matter what, no matter what you do. Do women not read on the toilet like men do? Men generally re regard that area as their inner sanctum, so to speak. And they might Is that true? To, uh, Guys in the audience? Yes. yes. Uh -huh. There's so, a lot of thinking going on there. Phil, this is a hilarious book. There's a whole lot more that is not in this, but it's uh, wonderful. If you've ever hesitated to ask a question because you think it might be considered insensitive or impolitic, now is your chance. This is sort of a child's sort of curiosity. Nothing is out of bounds, and everything is considered to be uh, a genuine, sincere question. Absolutely. And, and what's been astonishing to me is how this book, people coming up to me on the street and my workshops are telling me it has become a release valve for Why do Christian networks tell television networks feature people with big hair and lots of makeup <laughs> because they're appealing to their base <laughs> why do so many gay men seem to speak with a lisp and with that one I talked to an expert expert who talked about you know the history of minstrelization and, and, and gay men who are trying to express themselves in the sort of in your face sometimes they will lisp but if you think that all gay men do that, and then you see someone lisping, you're going to maybe assume that, that that's a gay person, and it may not be. Right, right. Now, that's the kind that seems openly offensive, so I can see people hesitating. <laughs> Here's a question that seems a little more innocent, uh, and that is, do African Americans pray to a white god or black god? Really? This mistake is we brought the blacks so on. That was the biggest mistake. When someone makes remarks like that at the start of the show, where do you go next? That's I true. hope that's black true. and that's white that's would that's hate each other, because you know what? It'll keep our race. This is pure. Hey, you guys, I just want to warn you, the conversation we're going back into could get a little hectic. Because we brought the blacks over, and that was the biggest mistake. We should have let, we, well, yeah. we slaughtered them. We took them over. We were what? dominant. We were dominant. We took them over. They were just oh. ignorant I'm people living in, a, too, living in the thing. Hey guys, welcome back. You saw us a minute ago. You can tell that this conversation is going to get heated today. I'm going to add some more voices to the conversation now. Because you have a lot of questions that allow people to have these conversations. Certainly questions that lead us down different roads, but maybe you can share some of those with us well, I, that relate to what we're talking about. I think it's important for, for people to know how small of an element uh, that their conversation represents. I think you need to distinguish between hostility and hate. You know, a hostile person, we all have anger, we all have misconceptions. Right. A hostile person, I think, is someone who at least wants to jump into the ring and mix it up and engage. But when you have hate, it's, you, you don't, you're not really interested in, in getting into that arena for whatever reason. Hey, guys, welcome back. Gotta get the author of this book. Some of the stuff that we've seen today results from a couple of things. One, most people. Um, have a fear of admitting to other people that they don't know everything and so they don't want to ask questions and then those people who do want to ask questions are we're so scared of offending because of the PC movement that we never engage in that dialogue so I mean I want to encourage everyone here today and everyone watching to you know we talk about random acts of kindness let's have a random act of curiosity you know engage one person today ask them a question or better yet Tell them that you welcome them asking you a question that Whatever you know they they'd know. like to ask you that might be offensive. It's a good idea. You know, it's just like the title of my book, Random Why Do White People curiosity. Smell Like Wet Dogs. That, when, that, <laughs> when that question came in in the morning, I'm sitting there looking at it, I'm like, what the hell is that? <coughs> I went to my black friends at work and I'm talking to them about it. You know, I'm like, is this, should I put this question up? And they're like, yeah, Phil, that's something we talk about. You know, <laughs> what? <laughs> something you say. I've, I've never met a white person who's ever heard that. And I've never met a black person who hasn't heard it. And it's such an example of this. We talk about we're in an information age, and yet we're, we're totally disconnected. And we, yeah. and we have to get back together and start asking those questions.